It's Women's Week in the Cathedral, and this year's theme is Beyond 2020, focusing on what lies ahead. And with us today, we have the lovely Deborah Goodridge, and I want you to just stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And as promised, we have with us today, Deborah Goodridge. And Deborah, we want to say welcome to the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure <laughs> to have you. And you're always so busy. I'm so grateful that you were able to pause and have a sit down chat with us. Yes? Thank you. So Deborah, tell us a bit about yourself. Who is Deborah Goodridge? My name is Deborah Goodridge. Yes. I am... Um, a quiet person, I would say. I'm a business lady. I have two kids, two children, five grandchildren. Best. <laughs> you are I love the Lord. I have been serving him from 14. And he has never failed me yet. Amen. So tell us a bit about that. Let's go back. Let's go, let's go way back. Tell us about your childhood and how was it growing up? Before, you, you said you gave your life to Christ at 14, yes. but tell us about that journey up until then. Well, being a child, I was a little tomboy, actually. Climb trees, climb palings, pick apples, go fishing. That was my childhood as a little girl growing up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love to sing, too, run, and I like a lot of playing. So that was my childhood that growing was it. up. So, yes. um, tell me, did you have any siblings, any brothers, any sisters? Yes. Playing in the neighborhood, pitch yes. marbles, and oh, I love the pitch marbles. <laughs> I had at that time four, one sister and three, two brothers. Okay. Two brothers. Mm -hmm. So I would go and pitch marbles. I would keep back my lunch money, and go <laughs> buy marbles and mm -hmm. go and pitch. So that was one of my days on the, on the run when I was yeah. a little child. Yes. Um, and growing up, you know, um, did you find that your mother would call upon you to help with the chores often or were you too busy outside playing? Yes, I was the youngest one of the, the four, three of the children. Mm -hmm. So I was the one to clean, to cook, to do everything. When the food wasn't good, when it was salty, my, my symbolist would say, it's salty. And I would say, have to eat it. <laughs> so that I'm was one of... Boss, so. <laughs> so I was like, you know, the youngest, but mm. the one that used to do everything in the house yeah. because I chose to do it. You know what? I'm not even surprised because <laughs> that, just, that just adds into your character of who you really are. You are a helper. That's one of the first words that come to mind when I think of Deborah. Deborah mm -hmm. is a helper. Let's talk now about going into school and how was the atmosphere at school for you? Well, I went to Parkinson and after school, I went to classes and after classes, um, I started to work. I love netball, so I used to play netball at school. How was that for you? How was netball? So I used to, well, netball was good. I used to play a goal attack. Okay. So, as I said to you, I, I like running around. <laughs> so that's what I used to do at school. Did you join any teams or like I know I know back in the day St. Barnabas was the team to be. So did you join any netball? Yes, team? I had joined um, the police club. I was playing the netball for that club in Bear Street. And how was that for you? How was it for you? Then? It was good. I enjoyed it actually. Yes. How long? Until, how long were you there? How long were you involved in it? Like three years at the police club, I um, played netball. Yes. And were you ever able to go back there and, you know, and, and, and maybe help out in any way or, or give back to the club since you since you've left? No, you know. Maybe because, you should. <laughs> because then it would have been taken up in other things. Hmm. As I say to you, I become um, a Christian too at 14. At 14. And then during that course of my life, I had done a little outreaches. I go to open air. That's where actually I got safe at open air. 
So tell us about that. Where, where, where was the open air when you got saved? Where um, flight staffs. Were Actually, you, where, mm -hmm. I was where I'm living That's now. That's where you were living? Yes. Right, so you, you happened to be home and then there was an open air around that time? Yes, the team came from this church. Okay. Right, a good one. So, you know, I would have attended the, church, the, the meeting, so I would stay up there and then. How was so. it hearing all this kind of music? Cause, um, so, did you go to any church before then? Because, you know, you could go to church, but you're not necessarily yes. saved. Yes, I always wanted to, to be in church. I went to St. Barnabas. Not that my mother had sent me, I would go. My grandmother was a member there, so I used to go. The yeah. folk being saint. So, <laughs> I always had you know, that, that vision because I wanted to serve God without getting pushed. That's right. Mm -hmm. So let's look now at the contrast between the Anglican type of music and now you're hearing this tambourine and hand clapping music. Do you think mm -hmm. that might have um, drawn you to, towards the open air more? Not really. I just wanted to serve God and that is what. And you thought that was I, the time at the age of 14? Yes. Yeah. So then would you say that you were determined to be saved even without the open air, or did it in, impact you Yes, to I would. No, I was determined to, to be safe and to serve God because I was going before the open air. So after that, after you became saved, did you start to attend the People's Cathedral? Yes. Yes, that's when, yes, yes. And joined the choir at the same time. Wow. At that time. You were not messing around. <laughs> you were serious. You were on the ball. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the choir. How did you, how, how did you, or, you know what, you're sitting in the choir up to now, mm -hmm. but how was that experience for you, joining that huge choir? How was it for you? Well, at that time, being young, at 14, and joining the choir, I, it was an experience. It was a mom, you know, older. I probably was, I think I was one of the young ones that was indeed the only young one at 14. So there was a lady that named Muriel. She had groomed me along. So it was a good experience. It was coming along. It was enough work, hard work, but I had enjoyed it. And you mentioned Muriel, but were there any other persons within the choir who would have impacted was, your um, life? Vicky and Denny's. It was. So how would they have um, blessed you? They had helped me along, you know, with the parts and everything else. Yes. And encouraged you to, you know, to stay in there. Because yes. you actually was a young Christian, so. So they would um, encourage you, aside from rehearsals, there were yes. persons that you could call upon to give advice? Well, I never was a person, like, to call really on anybody mm -hmm. for that kind of advice. I, because I was a person that never liked to well, nobody in my business, I, whatever I go through, we go through with the help of God. And I say, well, before serving him, I don't know where I would be in serving him. So it wasn't really nobody let's, that I could call upon. Okay, so let's go forward a little bit now where, you, you know, the years have passed by, you're in the choir, but now the tables have turned now where there are younger people under you. Mm -hmm. And who will be looking up to you for advice? Did you mm -hmm. did you have any experience like that? Yes, but not um, so many. But it would be more like adults that needed the help. So I mostly help the adults there for them. Yes. So and in, in what way would you help them? Would you like give them advice? Well, advice, or? and if it's anything that I can give, I would give. If I well, I like to like take up my friends, so I would just grab them up and we would go out. So that's <laughs> what I would normally do. Just to cheer them up or just, or just randomly take them up? Um, to cheer them up, randomly make a plan to say, we're going here, mm -hmm. I would just get them and we would go different places. Because fellowship is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we think that fellowship is simply just coming to church, singing the choruses, mm -hmm. um, when, before COVID, hug your brother or sister, mm -hmm. and then head home. But fellowship is more than that. And then we have encouragement mm -hmm. where you can pick up the phone, call somebody and just say, mm -hmm. you know what, God loves you. Mm -hmm. You know, those are things that are very important mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So let's now talk about the fact that, you know, you, you've, you've, you're now in church, but we want to also talk about your profession and, and, and going into where you are. Let's talk about your journey heading up to where you are, because now you're a baker. But I dare say, were you always a baker or did you have other jobs before then? Yes, I had a job before them. I used to work in a factory um, doing um, 
well, like there was pieces like joining up different pieces and, and material, like putting on a color, mm -hmm. putting the sleeve. So that's what I used to do. And then it led on to the bakery. Well, my ex had, we had started the bakery. So that's our, my journey. I didn't go anywhere to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we started with bakers. Mm -hmm. So I would um, ask the bakers what they do and what they put in. So I would run in the bedroom and mm -hmm. write down the recipe so that when they can't come, I would take it to slap. Exactly, that it so, would, things wouldn't fall apart. You would right. be there to fill in. I have that spoil. is remarkable. <laughs> that is remarkable. So, so you, you had, um, even though it was your business, you had on-the-job training. Yes. 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 Which has clearly mm -hmm. um, helped you all the way till now. Yeah. So you mentioned being in the choir, but I also know that you've been a part of the worship team as well. And being in the choir and the worship team are two completely different entities. So tell us about your experience being in the worship team and how was it for you? Well, being in the worship team, it was... Um, um, what I say, um, uh, a journey, because being in a worship team is different to being in a choir. You have to make sure, and you have your note know right. If you don't have it right, you like, you know. So it was a challenge, but I had enjoyed being in a worship team. Yes. Yes. And interacting with your um, fellow members on the team, did you find that you always had a good um, rapport with them? You, you all always got along and. How was that? Yes, I always had a good rapport with my, with the colleagues, you know, that I worship with. We never had that kind of, you know, disagreement. It may be something that I may not like, see and not like, but it didn't really hamper, you know, being there in the worship team. Yes, you came focused, you came ready to yes. praise the Lord and you knew that he would be with it for yes. you. Yes. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, while you were in the bakery and, and you're, 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 you're self-taught at this point in time, I, I want to know of any funny moments. Did you have any mishaps, any, anything going wrong? So many. <laughs> anything going big when it was supposed to be small? <laughs> so many. <laughs> well, I have spoiled, I spoiled a lot of dough, <laughs> but with it all, I made it. You made it? But yes. I want to elaborate, elaborate. Spoil Tell me about, did you, when you say spoil, do you mean that it, the bread went sour? Did it blow up? Did it? No, <laughs> I may not put in the right ingredients. Mm -hmm. So then it may come out too flat. If it's a mm -hmm. sweet bread, it may come out too flat, too hard, something. But I spoil. <laughs> <laughs> but not only do you bake bread, we also know that you, you, you also sell um, food items like rotis and um, you know you sell your natural drinks as well and mm. what motivated you to, to go down that road as well? Well, a baked chicken. With, How could I forget the baked chicken <laughs> and the fried chicken? Mercy. With mm. the drinks, my son has started really making the drinks that I um, take that over. That's how I get into the drinks. With um, the chicken and the rotis, I just wanted to increase, put in something else different instead of bread. So that would make the menu, the menu more, you know, desirable. Yes. And would you say that you're, but because we do know that you do sell from one of your vans, because I know you have more than one van. Praise be to God. God is, God is awesome. Yes, he But, is. you know, you sell from your van. And would you say that that's a hub of activity, that people come, you know, people always come to you for advice. They chat with you in the evening. So it's not just a business per se, mm -hmm. but I, I dare say that it's a, it's a ministry on its own, you know. Yeah. Would you say then that, how, how was it for you uh, selling on an evening in front of the church mm -hmm. and having people coming to you uh, for advice? How, how has that been for you? Um, having, um, being selling and people coming, sometimes people may be sad and they may want an encouraging word, I'm there. Maybe they want, they may need something, I am there. I never hesitate not to, to help them either financially, giving them some of the items. So I think that's a way of being ministering to, Absolutely. to you know, you know to and the then ones that come and the little mm -hmm. children. Sometimes yes. they don't have, so <laughs> you have to give something they may come to, may have, but yeah, still want. So you give them. So I don't mind, you know. Have you ever had the experience where someone just walked off the street, walked off from the road and came to you and asked mm -hmm. for help? Or? Yes, I had that experience. So. And I did, well... 
you know? You can think about your family, could be your family. So I did help the yes. few that would walk off the street and need help. Now I know you're a woman of very few words, and I, I just want to say that you're, you are a bright light. I want to take this opportunity for the whole world to know that I think that you are a bright light. I'm always telling you these things. You know I've been telling you this thing, these things off and on over the years. And I just want to say thank you for being who you are because you don't see someone down without picking them up. Mm -hmm. And I know that, like I said, you're a woman of few words, but you don't need words because your actions say it all. And I want mm -hmm. to commend you for a job well done. And I do know that God has created things in store for you, Deborah. Thank you. Life has not always been easy with me. There was trials. There was a lot of hurt and pain. But I have trusted God. I put God in my life. I ask him, you know, I always ask him to help and to guide and to lead. And whatever he asks me to do, I do. So it's like, you know, the warrior is a child. When I can't seem to make it anymore, I go to God and he helps me through. So anyone that is hurting or being a Christian and being hurt, God is your provider. God listens and he helps you and he guides you. Well, that's it folks. We've come to the end of our interview with the lovely Deborah Goodridge. And I want you to stay with us as we continue to celebrate Women's Week right here in the Cathedral. God bless you until next time. I'm Alison Marvel. <laughs>